pin up, over the pitch and under the pitch. I don't think we've seen that before in competition. 1-1 one, one after 16 chases, and we're going to go to sudden death. There's nothing we need to say. Like, we're, we're going to win. <laughs> Tonight, we wrap up Group D, featuring the dominant Hollywood freerunners facing a red-hot Atlanta talent squad who believe they can steal the automatic quarter-final spot. The Texan team rise and the new Californians' momentum will need something special to make the playoffs. Hollywood freerunners, recent semi-finalists in the USA Championship and former finalists, always the bridesmaids and never the bride, but the team that is denied the most, Apex Moon, aren't here at this Pan Am Championship. Momentum, new faces, and look at that entrance from Miss Shane Ricketts. This is a guy we've been told to keep an eye on. A former sprinter and long jumper, his background is track and field from Jamaica. I swear, everything he did in practice, I could not believe. I wouldn't be surprised if these bigger teams are a little bit sweating from him. Is this going to be a rude awakening for the newcomers going up against the number two seeds? They've sent in their star player, Carl Soderman, who doesn't make the tag and he's out the quad. Is that not Chase Over? That's Chase Over, surely. He's, they're carrying on and the tag is given. But if he's gone out the quad, is that not automatically an evasion? They've, They've given it. It's an evasion. Carl Soderman went for the tag, went out of the quad, and he's Here immediately we the ends the chase. Comes over, and his hands do go down outside of the quad. I've heard if you're just on the starting plate, it's OK. But his hands went down on the WTC banner. That is out of the quad. Wow, what a start. Athletes ready! Michael Frazier has got a point on the board for Movementum against the number two seeds, but in comes Amos Rendell, a man who was the mastermind of Apex, the sensei that took him to world domination, and he's now plying his trade with this Hollywood team of stuntmen. And he showed he's still a mean player on the quad in his own right. Without a doubt, fantastic dive from him, a very scary one. Now we got Machine against Amos. This is a bit of a mismatch. It's going to be really interesting to watch. Watch this guy move. He is quick and he is so powerful. He jumps incredibly. How is he going to use that on this quad? Is Amos going to let him with all the strategy, all the know-how, the knowledge? Can he keep Machine at arm's reach and keep him away from him? So far, it's working and it does. And that is incredible. That right there is exactly what I was talking about with the mismatch. Amos is so good at reverse hurting the chaser, making the chaser go into these points where the chaser does not want to be, using his body language to send him wherever he wants him to go. Such good work from Amos. Athletes ready! Christian Fairfax, a man with 15 years parkour experience, comes in against Amos Rendow. Braids flailing about as he moves sweetly through the mountain and waits and just tries to sort of slink out the way of that dive. Could not do it. Amos Rendell out flat as Christian Fairfax keeps it at one apiece. Christian Fairfax right here diving through that tiny hole in the tilted cube. He is known for his creative movements, and that right there is one of them. Athletes ready! Matthew Hall, this is the guy that Joey has said we should be looking out for. He's been very, very impressive. New member of this Hollywood team. As he sets off, trying to track down Christian. We've not seen him really make a move, and he bails out of that one in the end, but still gets the tag. Really nicely done. An impressive work. He's ready! In comes for momentum Tony Campanale. As Matthew Hall, having got a Lead-off tag in his first appearance for the Hollywood Freerunners on the quad. Now looking to get his first evasion. There's some nice work by the Ridge where there's not a huge amount of cover. There's more here under the mountain above the loading bay. And Tony is trying to find a way through. He bangs his head, and that's cost him. That's cost him. He's a fraction of a second late. Were it not for banging his head on the bar, he might well have made that tag. Oh, that is a crazy rough one. Right here, when Matthew got around towards that lazy boy, I was a little bit scared for him, but I trusted his instincts. The thing was, Tony got through the hole quicker than Matthew was expecting. Just gets tangled up, and it costs him. 
so can Matthew Hall continue this little golden spell for Hollywood? All the talk about Carl Soderman and these other stars on this Hollywood team, but it's the newcomer who's really catching the eye at the minute. And this is impressive. Look at that. Hopping up over the bridge and under the bridge. I don't think we've seen that before in competition. And is that another one? It is evasion given. There was a desperate dive at the end, but Matthew Hall, oh, Joe, he talked to me about what we've just seen. Matthew making the only decision he could make right there. He comes up over the ridge and he knows. He looks back, Tyler's right on top of him. He cuts down, immediately goes over to break Tyler's Ten ankles. I feel bad again. for the guy because he's my old student. Eight, Hollywood free runners evading. Three, one, Hollywood free runners. Athletes ready! Well, Matthew Hall, we've got a find here. We've got a serious player on our hands. Joey Adrian was right. When is he ever wrong? And he sets off, but this time he does get, I think it was the snipe tag. He just had a trailing hand on the platform there by the ridge. And it means that that little run comes to an end. But he has turned this game around. They were 1-0 down. They now lead 3-1 Hollywood free runners. Said it before, I'll say it again. When you are tired from getting too many evasions, that's a good problem to have. But a bad problem to have is when you send it on the straightaway. Athletes ready! In comes Omar Zaki, long-standing member of this Hollywood team, moving straight to the center of the quad to try and flush his man, force him to make some decisions. And the decision he makes is to go all the way around the outside. He has the speed to stay alive for a while, but Omar Zaki says no by the tilted cue. Omar all too familiar with that tag. That's the exact one that I got him with just a couple years back, and he has perfected it since then. He saw Michael going towards the tilted cube, and he was 100% prepped for that dive tag. Again. Athletes ready! In comes Machine again. His undoubted athletic prowess wasn't enough to get hold of Amos Rendell, but look at the way he jumps. He just jumps and strides and eats up the ground. And Omar Zaki couldn't get away. And that is a better matchup for Machane. You can really see his athletic ability with that jump straight to the front line. Goes around the tilted cube and then off the sisters. He skips almost the entire front line there. Athletes ready! Carl Soderman, a man whose philosophy was always he will run you down, but he's trying to change things. He says, forget everything you know about Carl Soderman. This is different me. And you can see that there's some high risk moves. And again, there's another one there. He flushed him out and it's rare you see a tag in the middle. And I thought for a moment, the machine had just sort of lent out the way of it. For one second there, I thought he went a little bit too fast. And when machine bounced off that bar, he wasn't able to get the tag. But luckily Kyle was able to get the tag there. And that is a matchup I want to see again. Oh, Chase yeah. 12, Hollywood Freerunners evading. 3-1, Hollywood Freerunners. Athletes ready! So Carl Soderman looking to get his first point on the board. Through the mountain he goes. Decides, sort of shapes to go centrally and then goes under the ridge. And he's going to use that again. Then it's through the mountain. Makes that look so, so easy. I assure you, it is not. It is not a big gap that he's moved through. But the sisters moved over those as if they're not there. And then goes cross quad and Carl Soderman gets his first evasion of the Pan American Championships and I'm pretty sure he's gonna get more. I, I would be surprised if he didn't get more. That was classic work from Kyle. Same problem that I had with him. He just moves at the exact right time to put you where you don't wanna be. And it brings Hollywood free runners to match points. Chase 13, Hollywood free runners evading. Match points, Hollywood free runners. Athletes ready! Carl Soderman has got one point. He never is satisfied with just one. And that was a wow! Wow! Well, that is not a quick way of getting over the sisters, but he was so good at it, it nearly worked. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. He went over the sisters with the lazy ball here. We can see. He picked the sister's direction, and I think it just came up a little before he was ready. His eyes were still on the opponent by the time he was Ten going over the ball. Second. Athletes ready! In comes Wes. He is something of a tag specialist in that he always tags everybody he goes for. So that continues. They win right now, Hollywood. And he's not making his move just yet. He's just trying to find a way. But Michael is finding a way out of trouble. And Wes is getting a bit stuck here. Now he has to go. Oh, and he's just tagged in by the 
front line. It really looked like that was going to be the first time anybody had got away from Wes. But right in the end, he knew he had to make a move. He did, and he just got it to seal the win. Well, that was classic Wes right there. His opponent was cleaning away from him, and then his opponent messed up and Wes got the tag. I know how that feels. Wes still gives me crap for it to the day, but you know what? We kicked him off a no cap so we can get out of here. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> Wes Preston seals the win for Hollywood free runners. Yes, we saw a point for Carl Soderman. Yes, we saw Amos Rendell showing his skills, but I tell you what, it's the new guy, Matthew Hall, that might help take Hollywood to the next level. Could this be their year, Joe? Atlanta talents have been talking some Big stuff in the build-up to this. Captain Gabriel Payne says they're here to win it. They're here to win it without conceding a single evasion. And he's got a target, personally, of getting five points on the board just on his own. Got to admire the confidence, Joe. Athletes ready! Off we go in this Group D encounter, and it is Carsten, one of the new recruits to this Rise team. They've been doing things a little bit differently to try and improve their record. And Carsten, with some fancy stuff under the mountain at the start of the chase, but Sukan quickly got a handle on it. Yeah, Sukan showing he is one of the most intimidating chasers at this event, also a very intimidating evader. So. He knows what he's doing. He's not going to fall for those traps. He's just going to stay right under you and get ready for you to take off. Athletes ready! Isaac Hernandez comes in for Rice, trying to chase down Su Khan, who's been one of their main guys in getting evasions over the last few tournaments. And there's some nice scrambling stuff low down. And sets off round by the ridge. Isaac can't find a way through. And Sukan constantly looking over his shoulder. Again, good work low down from Sukan Greg. And it's the first point on the board for Atlanta Talent. Great work from Sukan there. Now, I, I feel a little bit bad for Isaac. He never fully put those jets on. Sukan was using great body control and ten sending his idea one way and then going the next. Athletes ready! So an early lead for Atlanta. Sukan looking to extend that, but in comes Carson Palmer. And there's a little dive under the mountain. It does not make contact. Ref's having an eagle eye on that one. Sukan looking really good low down. He's managing to do that work and then get up and still keep that speed up. And he keeps on using that. And why wouldn't you look at that? Absolute eagle stuff from Carson. Arms flailing around, and it did not make contact. It's another point for Atlanta. Man, Sukan is looking absolutely untouchable right now, keeping his opponent on the opposite side of the tilted cube that entire time and picking the perfect times to move. Chase four, Atlanta Talons evading. 2-0, Atlanta Talons. Athletes ready! In comes Will Pippin, man who sounds like a Dickens character, but Sukan Greg with great expectations for Atlanta Talons, but can't get a hat trick. A two point lead is a decent start though after the first four chases. I love to see what Will just did there. He's coming around and he's keeping the pressure on Sukan. He's not falling into his trap, he is just getting close and staying on top of him. Athletes ready! Well, that's a nice friendly start for Mr. Payne, the Atlanta captain, who roars at Will Pippen and then sets off after it. Remember, this is the guy who said, we will not concede a single evasion, and he's good to his word so far, five chases in. Almost looked like Gabe trapped himself there, but uh, he, was, he got a little bit lucky when Will turned back on himself here. You can see at the Lazy Boy, he tried to go through. I thought maybe he was trapped, but then pushes back and is able to snatch that tag. Ready. Gabriel Payne, having done the job of getting the tag, now looks to get his first point on the board at this Pan Am Championship here in Columbus, Ohio. Nice jittery stuff, just seeing what Carsten was going to do. And then sets up over the mountain, and he wasn't quick enough to get there, and that's bought Gabriel some time. And he's waiting on the sisters, and now behind the tilted cube, and that is his first point. Gabriel Payne starting this tournament just as he said he would. All right, Gabriel saying he wants those five points. He was looking great there, and at the end, 
I love what he did. He didn't want to cut over to the Lazy Boy. Instead, he stopped on the sisters, played around with him, and then went back the other way. Three zero Atlanta Talons. Athletes ready! Gabriel Payne taking the knee before the start of this chase, but off he goes to the sisters, and it was high risk. Carson makes the tag, and sort of shrug of the shoulders in apology at his teammates there, Gabriel Payne. Didn't work out. I cannot tell you why athletes keep doing that, but I saw it at least 10 times in practice. Don't know the point. Carson's got fresh legs, and he is the MVP of Rise. I got it. vote for him to get his evasion. Athletes ready! Ben Ortega gets on the quad for the first time in this one. It's, oh, my word, that's right in the solar plexus. But he's just ignored it. He nearly goes out the quad there. No tag made. Ben Ortega, he's kept his cool. He's recovered. But can he make the tag? He hasn't there. Carson Palmer might get a point here. And, well, the lights go green. The evasion is given. And Rise have managed to get their first point. Oh, let's go, Carson. I am so proud of this guy. He was looking fantastic there. A few uneasy steps from Ben, but Carson was able to do enough to get the evasion. JB Ninja Boy, probably not his real surname, but let's not find out. I like the sort of fiction of it. As Carlson Palmer imagined if having got his first chase tag evasion, he could double up. But JB is regarded by this Atlanta team as one of the most natural athletes in the team. And you can see him striding around the court there. Oh my, oh my, it looked an inevitability, but I'm not sure he did get the tag. It How is you so it, hard to tell. Again, it looked to me like he got away. Let's see here on the replay. Closing down on him. You think it's going to happen. There's a swipe at the back of the Tilted Cube and another one there. But I think he's just short before the lights go green. It's another point for Carson. All right, let's go, Carson. He's got great stamina. He's a big runner. Let's see what he can do. Well, all of a sudden, this game is alive. It's 3-2 to Atlanta. They led 3-0 and rise. A team who've been cannon fodder every single time that they've played in chase tag. Maybe things are changing, because Carson Palmer is on for a hat-trick. Oh, and you could tell there was just nothing left in the tank. You could see him turn around, look back towards center with that look of exhaustion on his face. There was nothing left for him to do, but he got his team back in this. He really has. Rise, doing things they've not done before. Chase 11, Atlanta Talons evading. 3-2 Atlanta Talons. Athletes ready! So Max Calderon, oh my, a stumble from Will Pippen and nearly slammed into the board as well. And despite all of that, Max Calderon has just sat at the bottom of the mountain, watched it all, and then suddenly realized he should be running away. It's one of those things where you're looking for a specific trigger, and then Will actually threw him off a little bit by taking that stumble, and then once the trigger was passed, Max just didn't know where to go. So, Will Pippin, this could level the game incredibly as the Atlanta team send in Anthony. Anthony hopping around, maintaining center control to flush him out, and that's sort of textbook stuff, isn't it? Yeah, beautiful work, keeping his legs both planted, so either way Will went there, Ant had him. Chase 13, Atlanta Talons evading. 3-2, Atlanta Talons. Athletes ready! So, only one point in it. The jittery legs of Anthony Walker, and he sets off over to the sisters, strides over to the front line, needs to get some speed to get away from him, and he did do at the start, but couldn't maintain it under the ridge. There's that power coming out from Isaac. That's exactly what I was talking about. Here he gets on top of the front line, plants his feet hard, and just pure guns it. Athletes ready! Can Isaac Hernandez level this game up? Starts quickly under the mountain. A pause by the loading bay, and he was going that way. Sukhan, Greg, read it like a book. Yeah, Sukhan doing a great job there. I don't like the decision from Isaac taking off from the tilted cube too early and putting him in that dead corner by the loading bay. Athletes ready! Atlanta can win it here. Sukhan. 
looking to seal a 4-2 victory. Goes across the quad, constantly trying to look over one shoulder, then the other, to know where his man is. And now a lovely goes under the sisters, then butts out of it. And he's under the ridge, and this might do it. Sukhan Greg, shimmy in one way, shimmy in the other, round by the front line, that will do it. A 4-2 win for Atlanta. They went 3-0 up. It looked like they could obliterate this Rise team, but Rise showed some determination, and maybe that's an encouraging sign for the rest of the tournament, even though they go down 4-2 in their opener. Yeah, you can see here on the evasion, Sukhan did such a good job of using that body language just to juke out his opponent, think he's going one way, and always goes the other way. But Atlanta, kick things off with a 4-2 win. They conceded two points, Mike. Gabriel wasn't bang on right, was he? Hello and welcome to the Arnold Sports Festival in Columbus, Ohio for World Chase Tag's Pan American Championship. We're focusing on Group D tonight and it is a really exciting group because Joey Adrian, Chase Tag legend, it includes one of the title favorites, this team of Hollywood stuntmen, the Hollywood Freerunners. Absolutely, they have the main man, Kyle Soderman. He ends up out of the quad in his first chase, gets it's a little bit angry, but in true Soderman style, he comes back and dominates. Hollywood! They now take on the Texans' rise, who, let's be honest, have not had any success in chase tag. Some solid players, but they just have not been a team for as long as Hollywood Free Honors has, and I feel like they just don't have that cohesion and that veterans mentality going into the matches. We're here to win. We're here to knock every team out seven to zero. If we're not playing for that, why are we here? We're definitely not gonna take Rise for granted. We beat them in 2022 in Texas four months ago, three to one, I believe, and I think we're gonna do better than that this year. Hollywood is a tough one. Obviously, doing everything we can to beat them, but mainly learning as much as we can in that match. That's kind of how we're treating every match. If we can't win, get as much as we can out of it. They have Amos, and Amos is the man for strategy. They have been getting coached by Jared Ludy, who is absolutely one of the top athletes in this sport, and he's incredibly smart, incredibly good, but we'll see how that translates over. I feel like we still just have that experience that they don't. As always, Carl Soderman in first, whether chasing or evading. And now he will be evading because he has made short work of Carsten Stoltz. This is something I'm starting to realize that I love more and more. A lot of teams are starting to go for this slow roll on the beginning. Kyle says, no, nah, I'm not having any of that. I'm coming out fast. I'm getting a fast tag, so I'm ready to evade. Athletes ready! So Soderman on the quad looking to evade. This is where he excels. This is a man who's got six evasions in a row. That never happens. Oh, Frank Mejia did it earlier. But it's rare, I'll tell you that. And you can see how he moves through those gaps in the mountain and over the sisters so elegantly, so quickly. And Carson Palmer is chasing, but not getting close because he's hopped up onto the mountain and down to the other side. And it is trademark Carl Soderman stuff. Man, Kyle does this so well. I remember going against him, and I felt like I could tag anybody, no chance. As soon as I started chasing him, somehow he just takes these routes that put you as the chaser in the worst possible spots, and we saw it right there. Athletes ready! Soderman indulging his insatiable appetite for evasions early on in this one. But he will not stop at one, not if he can help it. Just hanging around by the ridge, waiting, and now going and then turns back around and over the ridge. And Isaac Hernandez is struggling to get close to him. It's all the way around the outside. And if you're gonna get into a race with Cole Soderman, you're gonna struggle, because all that stuff, all that metal, all those platforms, it's like he just makes them disappear in front of him. Kyle really does have the best of both worlds. He is so good at sending you the wrong way. He can put on the gas on the straightaways. Nobody's catching him. He just does everything to perfection when it comes out right. Hollywood Freerunners. Athletes ready! See one of the calling cards there of Carl Soderman, that breathing technique that we so often see. And Will Pippin nearly grabs him as he descends from the ridge, but all of a sudden he's miles away from Carl Soderman. And he can just stop and wait and hang around. And he's still waiting, he's still hanging around. But now he goes round the sisters and look at the pace, that real acceleration to get away. Just when you think he might be in danger, he puts on the jets and he's safe again. I held my breath there. I thought Jason got the tag there right by the ridge. It 
had to have been so close, unable to get it, ended up kind of tripping over his own feet on the front line and wasn't able to get back there. Athletes ready! It is three on the spin for Carl Soderman already. It is not even that surprising to see him do that sort of stuff, but it is surprising to see him take that route, and he's mixing it up, he's got caught out, but interesting nonetheless. Karsten said, hey man, I just saw Frank ace a whole team like that. <laughs> I'm not falling for it. I'm getting up high and I'm cutting you off. Athletes ready! Dale Smith, the man from Cleveland, and he's described by his teammates as a wrecking ball, as a rhinoceros. But apparently he's been putting some work in to bring a bit of technique, a bit of control to it. But this is pretty impressive from Carsten here, who sets off under the ridge. And Dale's got tangled up in the loading bay there. And now he's running out of time to make a move. And he has run out of time to make a move. He does get there in the end, but he's a second or two too late. Great work from Carsten taking the exact moment to look at his opponent so he knows, OK, you're coming through the loading bay. I'm out of here. I'm going to make it all the way around. Get to the lazy boy. Oh, you're making your move? I'm out of here every single time. Chase seven, prize evading, 3-1 Hollywood Freerunners. Athletes ready! Well, the only guys who got evasions for Rise before are no longer in the team. They're not around. But in the previous match, Carson picked up a couple. Now Carson has got himself on the board. And Wes is a man you don't evade. But he's evading him at the minute. But that won't last because Wes manages to get through the sister's obstacle quicker than his man. Yeah, it looked like Carson's legs were just starting to give out on him when he tried to go over the sisters. I think had he gone under here, because he was tripping Wes up very good, sent him the wrong way on the Lazy Boy, but decides to try to Kong over the top. I think if he went under, he may have gotten that evasion. Athletes ready! Now, Wes, we know he can tag. Can he get an evasion? Anthony Carlton coming in, the team captain for this Rise outfit from Texas. Wes going all around the outside, hops over the sisters, and he's looking to go high again, but the tag was made, just got sniped on that bar on the hand. That is something that you don't see from a lot of newcomers. They are not ready to snipe that hand on the bar. But you can see Anthony put his hand down low and actually ripped his other hand up to get that snipe tag. Here we see going around the mountain. Right there, Wes may have been able to stop. He sees his hand, boom, snads it. Athletes ready! Omar Zaki comes in, hops up onto the ridge, looking to get a bit of height to descend, but into the loading bay. Nice little move to force the chance, but it's one he can't take, because Anthony's away. A similar kind of thing, and while he did lose a bit of foot, and you can see exactly what he's doing, trying to show him both ways and cut them both off at the same time. Difficult, it worked. He had, Anthony had a great move there. He tried to juke one way, Omar had a little bit of a stumble here. Right here, his leg goes over the top. That was Anthony's time to move. He missed it. Omar got reset and ready. Free runners evading. 3 1. Hollywood free runners. Athletes ready! 3 1. Hollywood. They're in charge of this, but Rise are putting up a fight. Omar Zaki managed to move through the mountain very, very nicely, and just a real sort of flail of the arm to try and send his man one way. Isaac Hernandez lands on his neck. He's still up and going, but Omar Zaki is still on with this evasion. He dives out of the way. Oh, wow. Wow. It may have worked. I don't know. They're going to have to check the timings. Joey, how did you see that one? To me, it looked like he just got the tag. Just barely got the tag. You can see he's by the loading bay. He comes under the mountain to get to the loading bay. Isaac Hernandez recovers again. He's still chasing him down at this point. Back to the loading bay for Omar Zaki. And we're getting towards the end of the chase, and he knows it. So he throws himself away from him. Then the tag is made on the shin, and it's just before the 20 seconds runs out. Athletes ready! Amos Rendell comes on for the first one in this, first time in this one. A lovely little spin around the ridge as he decides not to go after his man, but a move into the tilted cube. And yeah, that is, it's old school, apex thinking. You set the trap, you will wait for them to walk into it, and then it's easier to get your glove on them. Isaac almost had it right. Little did you know, Amos, he's a big guy. He fits through that small hole, able to thread it, get the tag. Athletes ready! 
Well, that's an interesting starting position from Amos, but he immediately retreats to a bit more cover. Carson looking to track him down, and Amos loves to waste time and wait, and he'd set off there. The tag is given. I thought we were just having a bit of a standoff situation where nobody was acknowledging it, but the tag is given. It remains 3-1. Rise on out of it. When your teammate has a wrist injury, you're one man down. Do you guys feel the pressure from that? Uh, we felt the pressure even before this tournament started. Well, as at this point, we're actually three men down. So it's just another curveball that we're going to have to work with. Uh, it's not really a setback. It's just something we got to deal with. It's all about adapting, and that's just what we're going to do. Well, in comes Matthew Hall for the first time in this one. He is a guy who impressed in his debut performance in their opening game. Can he get hold of Carson here and just snuff out any hopes of some heroic comeback from the Texans? Carson's racing around the outside, and Matthew is willing to let him do it. That's chance one. Will there be a second chance? There will not! because Carson salutes the crowd, salutes the fans, salutes his teammates. He's got another point, and Rise closed the gap. Carson is not only my hero, but Rise's hero. Amazing work. Matthew goes for his signature dive through the top of the mountain. I saw him hitting this so well. Ends up getting tripped up, and Carson puts enough distance between the two of them that he's able to get that full evasion. Athletes ready! Well, Rise have been Easy prey in previous tournaments, but he's easy prey there for Carl Soderman, who's come in and said, enough of this nonsense. We're Hollywood free runners. We're one of the favorites for the title. I will not be pushed close here. Man, I said it earlier. I love how he comes out so fast looking for that tag. Isaac needs to get this or it's all over. Chase 15, Hollywood free runners evading. Match point, Hollywood free runners. Athletes ready! Carl Soderman's hat-trick in the first few chases of this put them in such a commanding position, but they only lead 3-2 Hollywood. Can the same man close it off? Under the ridge, now by the front line, Isaac Hernandez trying to find a way to make a move. He does make a move, but Carl Soderman's too quick, and he hops out of the mountain, and he's wondering where to go, but he makes the decision based on where his man is, and Carl Soderman gets all four points for Hollywood free runners in this one as the number two seeds make it back-to-back -back wins. Atlanta! Tolo! In come Atlanta with a finger to the lips. Quiet, they say, but now they burst into life. And can they burst into life in this tournament? An impressive 4-2 win against the Texans' rise in their opener. They'll be favorites here against Movementum. Movementum? Oh, they're a good crew. They've got about two star players, Shane and Michael, pretty strong guys. Michael actually trains with us, but I think the rest of the team's a little rough around the edges. I think after a match with us, they'll kind of learn what they need to clean up. I think we're kind of in a good position because people don't know anything about us. We're kind of the underdog. I think there's probably not a lot expected from us. Something I was talking with another athlete about was how many layers veterans have placed on the game, how many tactics we've seen. Newbies, they can kind of cut through all that BS and find the, the way out. But I have confidence that my team is practiced enough and where they're rough, we're sharp. You know, one of the things that is we're a little unconventional because people have played it so to the T of like, oh, you do this through here and do that through there. And so, yeah, I'm hoping that unconventionality that we have and them not knowing much about us could be to our advantage. Can they spring a surprise against Atlanta, Joey? It's a big ask. It's a very big ask. They do have Machine, who is terrifying. He is up first for evasions. Gabriel looks like he's coming up to go against him. This is going to be a match to watch right here. Chase one, movementum evading. Athletes ready! Gabriel says that once he gets on the quad, it is war. He has got his game face on. But Michane, look at the strides from this man. He just moves. Just, he just does not stop going through the air. And he keeps on doing it, hopping around all over the place. And Gabriel Payne is clutching at shadows, clutching at air. Big, big air from Michane Ricketts. And a big, big point to the start of this one. When I say Michane is someone to watch, that is what I'm talking about. I thought for sure he stumbled at least twice there, able to recover with those strong legs. Look at that power going up the mountain. So few athletes can do that, and with so much acceleration. Athletes ready! 
Well, a note of caution, they did go 1-0 up unexpectedly against Hollywood Freerunners and end up going down 4-1. But Michane gets caught out by Sukon Gregg, who was the main man for Atlanta in their opening game with three evasions. He's got a chance now to add to that. Athletes ready! Michael Frazier comes in. They relied heavily on him in their opening game. Goes up to the mountain, and he's evidently keen on keeping high. So Sukon goes low under the front line. He just swings out of the way of that bar. But Michael Frazier, too quick, got there, didn't give him any room for manoeuvre. Watching Michael in practice, he is all about that athleticism. Not so sure about the tactics, but that athleticism. As soon as Sukon goes right here, he cuts across the front line. This is where Michael wants to be. As soon as he goes in center, it's still a straightaway. Athletes running! JB steps up. And Michael steps onto the sisters and then sort of descends to get going. And we start to see the pace. And JB reaches out a hand, but he's gone back the other way. And he really has to turn on the Jets. But they are some quick guys in this momentum team. But JB just showing the importance of cutting down the angles. You go through the center, you don't run as far. Exactly. And that right there, I like to call it the sister trap. You get up high towards the front line, and we'll see it here. As soon as he comes over and cuts around Lazy Boy, JB cuts straight from front line down the sisters, and you can really put power behind those steps. Athletes ready! So can JB level this game up for Atlanta? Number 11, Tyler Potterball on the quad, sort of reaching in, inquiring at the uh, Tilted Cube. Anybody home? Turns out he popped out and he was there to tag it. Well done from Tyler. I thought maybe he was wasting too much time, but in reality, he really sold this push through, pushed back off of his hands when JB went the wrong way. Athletes ready! Tyler looking to get his first evasion as Anthony threatens to go into the Tilted Cube and decides against it. Again, he's maintaining that sort of center control, but when he makes his move, it means he's fresh to be able to really give it some, and that's what led to the tag. It's that same trap that JB used. He gets right on top here by the Lazy Boy, and you're going to see him plant both legs, one towards that front line, and then one on top. There it is. Guns it down. Easy tag. Athletes ready! Machine, eyes on the center of the quad. Now he's got his eyes on Anthony. Spins around to find that he's gone. And look at that, they're shaking one way, then the other. They were both waiting to make a move. Machine waited for Anthony, he made his move, just reached out and grabbed him. Bopped him right on the head, gotta, gotta love that one. Now, I think this is the correct matchup. It looks like Sukong coming up against Machine. I think that is a wise, wise decision. Use those tactics. Athletes ready! Sukan comes in. Michane, the man who got that first point and so far only point in this matchup, will not add to it now because Sukan has made that tag, made it quickly, and he should be fresh as he looks to level this game up as we enter the second half of the match. Sukan was so ready for him to cut towards the mountain right there that he just vaults down off the bar and immediately sends it for that dive. Smart play. He needs this evasion. Athletes ready! It is down to Sukon here to see if he can get Atlanta back on level terms. Christian Fairfax just struggling with his foot placement there around the bars, but this is nice to sort of take the inner route, and my word, he's flung himself through there. It was a small chance of success, and not big enough, it turns out. But can he fashion another opportunity? He decides to turn it into a chase around the outside. He wasn't close enough to do that, and Sukon gets away. Man, that dive through the loading bay was one of the scariest things I've ever seen. Christian is a big guy. Here he comes, just sends it full speed through, and I cannot believe Sukon got away there. Athletes ready! Well, they got the first bit done. They've leveled the match, Atlanta. But can they go into the lead for the first time? It is Michael who is looking to track down Sukan, who uses that low little rue under the front line. You see Frank Mejia do that to great effect. Not quite as successful for Sukan. Not a bad attempt because Sukan knows my, you don't want to be on a straightaway with Michael. So he says, no, 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 I'm got, not going front line. I'm going to cut back, assuming you're sending it down the front line already. Michael saw it come in, able to grab that bar and get the tag. Athletes ready! In comes Gabriel, the team captain. 
He was evaded early on in this one. Oh, look at that! Oh, oh my! Real jack-in-the-box spring as he sets the trap, cocks the gun and fires through those bars to catch Michael as he tried to transition between the two sisters. Got to be one of the rarest tags you ever see. Gabe knew exactly what to do with zero hesitation, and that's why it paid off for him. Athletes ready! I am enjoying this little battle between Machine and Gabriel. We've seen it a couple of times in this one already. Gabriel looking for revenge after being evaded. He goes over the sisters and under them, but Machine just drops down from the tilted cube. Can't find a way to make a tag. On oh, he does this time. It's the stride. He is a big guy, not as big as some of the guys, but that stride, that jump, that power in the jump, it really does cut down the gap quickly. Yeah, I thought Gabriel had it. He was being very technical, sending Machine the wrong way over and over again. But as soon as Machine was able to, able to plant two strong strides here, he was able to cut him off and get that tag. One all. Athletes ready! JB back into the fray. It's straight towards Machine. And he goes round by the ridge. There's a dive, but he does not make contact. The ref says no tag. But he's going to be attacked here, surely, surely! Well, it's a good job he did, because JB committed. He wasn't getting another chance if that didn't make contact. That right there, I thought JB had him in his trap over here by the loading bay. Thought there was no way Machine was getting away, but going up and over the gun proves to pay. And then he ends up going over the sisters, but just isn't able to get those legs under him enough. Chase 14. Athletes ready! The fresh Tony Campanale comes into it. JB starts under the ridge. And off he goes, bouncing off the mountain to head to the tilted cube. And now he goes underneath the mountain, but cuts across. He did not know where Tony was going, and it meant that he could stop him getting into centre court. Yeah, it's so hard to see, but where Tony is going here under the mountain, there is a bar that he has to slide so low underneath right there, able to duck his head just enough to get that tag. Athletes ready! This could be a shock. Tony Campanale being tracked down by Anthony. Atlanta will lose this game if they do not tag Tony. Oh, my word, it looked like he could get away with that stumble, but he did not know. He was basically hidden down by the loading bay, didn't know where his man was, and by the time he got to his feet, it turned out he was right in front of him. That right there is where some of these new teams can surprise you because Anthony was doing the right thing and assuming there was going to be no stumble, taking center control here, as soon as he goes for this chance, doesn't get it in the loading bay, take center control back. When that ball happens, he almost got away with it, but not able to get up in time. Athletes ready! It was match point momentum. Now it's match point Atlanta, and Anthony is not going to get it. And we're going to go to sudden death. 1-1 one, one after 16 chases, and I'm kind of expecting we might end up with another Michelle Gabriel Payne situation. Momentum? They have to be feeling tired, where Sukon, on the other hand, is using a lot more of this tactical juke you this way, juke you that way, not just putting on the gas. A so I think it's very smart to send him out as the evader. A reminder, it is now longest evasion wins. They both get a go, and Momentum are sending in Michael again. Athletes ready! Atlanta's best evader, Sukon looking to set as big a time as possible. There's a stumble, and that's a tag, and it's less than seven seconds, and Atlanta are in real trouble here. Real trouble. Big, big, big trouble. And you're right, it looks like Machine's going on, and I would not be surprised to see Gabriel coming after him. I think that's what we're going to get. And Gabriel Payne, the team captain for Atlanta, has got to track down this incredible athlete. Gabriel has got to be having flashbacks right now. Wow, 5.7. It's not even six seconds. It's less than six seconds. Gabriel's going to have one chance, and that's it. Athletes ready! Gabriel Payne has less than six seconds to get there. Machine is going over the mountain. No, he's not. He jumps out of the way. Gabriel does not get there. It is enough. It is enough. And Atlanta have been...
beaten. The number six seeds have been beaten by the newcomers in sudden death. It is a big shock. I am blown away by this one. And you know, I can see Gabriel is kicking himself right now because Machine gave him a chance here. Gabriel's ready for it, but then hits that huge jump off where Gabe is not able to hit the tag. And again, going over the gun buys him just enough time for the full evasion. Atlanta Talons came here talking some big stuff about their chances of not just winning their group, but winning the whole thing. They have been beaten by the newcomers, the late replacement. You can see the frustration written all over Gabriel Payne's face. And their final group game is against the big guns in this group, Hollywood Free Runners. It is going to be a tense ending to Group D. We're going against Rise. We're going against Rise. And they're going down. We're going to take the win. They're going to fall. We're going to get Rise. We're going to try to rest. Go down. Down. Welcome back to Columbus, Ohio, here at the Arnold Sports Festival, where Group D action continues in the World Chase Tag Pan America Championship. The Texan teams have started to get evasions on a more regular basis, but they've still lost both their opening games 4-2 against Atlanta and Hollywood. It means that they must win this one to go through to the playoffs and face APK Gray. Otherwise, it'll be on the first plane back to Texas. Movement, we have no idea what's going on there. I've heard one of their dudes is incredible. So I'm going to look out for him, figure out who he is. Yeah, that's kind of weird because like you don't, you, there's like no way to prepare for him. Yeah, so I don't know what to expect from Momentum, honestly. We're going to treat him like they're a high class team. That's what, that's the, that's the mindset we're going to go with. The late replacement team from California have come with a whole set of skills that are very raw, but also pretty dangerous. And they managed to get a sudden death win against Atlanta, which has opened up a world of possibilities. They could finish bottom of the group and go out. They could be third and go through to the playoffs. They could even finish second if results go their way, which would be an enormous success for a brand new team in the sport. I think if they're looking to win this one, they got to rely heavily on Machine, who is up first as the evader. Athletes ready! Carson Palmer starting off as the chaser, says that the work he's done in preparation for this with Apex's Jared Ludi has just opened his eyes, changed him as a player, and it seems to have had an effect because he does seem to have leveled up, but he doesn't seem to have made contact there with Machine. In this opening chase, Machine goes over the top of the mountain and bounces off the bars and the platforms, and he's picked up the lead-off evasion. Machine using that incredible spring that he's got from his background in sprinting and long jump. Yeah, amazing athletic ability coming out of Machine. Right there, he just didn't stop moving and never let Rise's man get in position. Carson couldn't set up any single trap. Athletes ready! Isaac steps in. Machine heads under the ridge and over to that big open space where he can stretch the legs. And he goes over the sisters and stops and goes back over the sisters. And again, lovely foot placement moving around on those bars. A stops and waits by the ridge. But look at him bounce off everything. Like a rubber ball, Machine Ricketts has doubled up. And that right there, Machine is just stretching his legs all the way across the quad. Most athletes can't even take these drops onto two feet. He's doing it to one while jumping 10 feet to the next one. Chase three, momentum evading. Two zero, momentum. Athletes ready! Carsten comes in, new member of this Rise team, and he's more than played his part. And my, wow, a hexaset missile stuff as he tracks down Machine. That is the way to shut down Machine. Don't necessarily wait for him to fall into a trap, just predict where he's going to go. He is relatively predictable. Rise knows this, they gotta be ready for that though. Athletes ready! Now can Rise get into this contest? It has been a bit of a nightmare start for them as Michael doesn't quite find a way to drop down on top of Carsten there. Swings around the lazy boy and Carsten's off. And again, he's turned back on himself, and well, it's turned out to be the wrong decision in the end. 
maybe that's a bit after the timing there. It could have worked. Yeah, it's so difficult to know there. He saw Michael commit into, or he thought he saw Michael commit into the loading bay. Michael didn't full commit. He went through to his hands and immediately pushed back out. Solid play from Michael. Athletes ready! Michael Frazier sighting by the sisters, and he's just hopped up onto that and still found a way to accelerate away. A lovely move over the ridge, and up high is a reach from Carson, but he doesn't make contact. And he's straddling the sisters there, Michael, and decides to go over them again, bouncing off the board, and Carson Palmer is not able to get a hand on him. And a pause and a hesitation there proves to be terminal. Movementum off 3-0 up. Now, Carson has a lot of experience, but he's playing on the terms of another team that has experience. Most teams don't like to evade up and over the mountain, so he was expecting Michael to go under. Michael has the strength and power to make it over the top just fast enough to get out of the way every time. Chase six, momentum evading. Three zero, momentum. Athletes ready! Well, Rise playing exclusively with three players at the minute. And Isaac comes back in and does make the tag pretty quickly against Michael. But the lead is already three points here. And Rise have got it all on to just get back into this contest. Isaac is another one of those powerhouses. He has so much speed, so much explosive ability. If he can set up and not fall for traps, he has a great chance to evade. Athletes ready! First chance for Alan Keneally, the team captain, to get on the quad. 42 years young, but absolutely loving the opportunity to be involved in this. Now, he nearly loses his footing on the front line, but he's recovered as he threatens to hop into the tilted cube. You can see the thinking, but it doesn't quite work out because he can't redirect. And that was a desperate one there because he does... I'm not sure he knew how much time he had left. He felt he needed to do that and maybe he didn't. Yeah, as you say, I think that's exactly what happened. He thought that was his last chance there and uh, went for it. You don't really develop that internal clock until you've been on the quad, you know, 20, 30 times. Well, what it means is that Rise get their first point. Is this the start of the fight back? Rise evading. 3-1, momentum. Athletes ready! In comes Christian Fairfax, man who runs his own parkour gym known as the Flying Frog Academy. And didn't need to do any flying there, as he... Well, unfortunately, Isaac Hernandez's race has just choked or croaked. Isaac, on that last evasion, did such a good job of playing to his strengths. There, he fell into the same trap as earlier. Christian goes in and immediately pushes out of the loading bay. Athletes ready! Movementum and Christian Fairfax are in a decent position here. As Christian goes under the ridge, Jason Budd trying to track him down. There's a little jittery foot placement there to try and move his man out of that spot. And in the end, that's, that's quite a textbook little movement there around the loading bay. Absolutely. You get your hands on this outside of the loading bay towards the corner, and you play yourself back and forth over that until you can make your way inside. If they haven't moved by the time you're inside, you're almost always going to get them. Athletes ready! Tyler has his eyes on Jason as he looks to preserve this two-point lead. A little swing under the bar looked nice, but didn't offer an opportunity. And he's so, so close there. Oh, well, I think maybe the tag had come earlier. Jason's acknowledging that, but if it hadn't come there, it was about to come by the sisters. These guys right here, Tyler and Jason, both from my original hometown, Portland, Oregon. So good to see them going up against each other. I thought Jason may have had it, but shout out to him for saying, nah, nah, you caught my hail. Chase 11, momentum evading. 3-1, momentum. Athletes ready! Well, Carson comes in again. He's been good for Rise in this tournament. Feels like he's leveled up, but both times he's been on the quad in this match, he's been evaded. That cannot continue, and it does not continue. He gets the tag. That time, Carson able to set up his track perfectly, and I think he was feeling it. As soon as he got hands on the loading bay, he was ready to make that tag the whole time. Now, he needs to get something done here. He's practiced strategies against Michael and Machine specifically. Let's see if he can put him in action. Athletes ready! 
Now then, Carson, who's managed to pick up evasions in their first two matches for Rise. Can he keep the streak going? If he can, they're right back in this as Michael just stumbles and somehow manages to get out of it. Carson is... Oh, my! Has he got away? No, he hasn't. No, he hasn't. It was a real, like, fully committed dive from Michael there. Yeah, again, you see Carson going for a textbook setup, faking them onto the side of the cube that he wants them to go on. The thing is, Michael has so much explosive power, once he comes down, he springs off of both feet. And it is match point momentum. Athletes ready! Will Rise be left to go back to Texas still without getting their first ever chase tag win? There's no doubt they've improved, but maybe not enough. And Isaac has really narrowly avoided a pretty nasty accident by the sisters. He is up and still going, but that dive there doesn't make contact because Michael Frazier has just launched himself through the air once again so effectively. And they have ground Rise down. Movementum, the newcomers, and have now swept aside Rise, an established team. It is an Astonishing story from the late replacements. I don't care who you are, any team competing here has to be fearful of momentum. They have those two star players, Machine and Michael, who can take out anyone and evade anyone. It is another disappointing campaign for Rise. They exit at the bottom of Group D, but momentum will be going through to the playoffs after an astonishing victory against Rise. They've won two of their matches out of the three they played in the group, and nobody expected that. Atlanta, they should be scared of us. There's, there's nothing we need to say. Like, we're, we're going to win. <laughs> Sir, we're looking forward to it, but I think we're going to take it. I 100% believe it, actually. We're not worried. Um, they are great. I think we're better. Hollywood free runners, the number two seeds, believe that this could be their time to get their hands on the title. Atlanta say they're not scared of Hollywood. Hollywood say they're not bothered by Atlanta. Let's see what plays out over the next 16 chases. Athletes ready! This might set the tone, captain v captain. The talking is done, the chasing begins, and Gabriel Payne makes a dive through the loading bay that doesn't make contact. You can see that Carl Soderman went all the way around the sisters twice there, and Gabriel Payne, is he going to get another chance? Is that one dive going to be the only opportunity to get Carl Soderman? It was, as Soderman gets the point. That right there is why Kyle Soderman is so dangerous when he's on the quad. He is not stopping, he's waiting. Most players are looking for these trigger points when they need to move. Kyle is seeing that actively while he's moving, so he never gives you a static target. You can plan, you can rehearse, you can prep, but actually stopping Kyle Soderman is different. Athletes ready! Zukan Gregg, who's been one of the stars of this Atlanta team so far here in Ohio. He reaches out and doesn't get Carl Soderman because he is lightning quick and he nearly gets him by the ridge. But look at the way Soderman moves through the mountain so quickly. And it's a race around the outside and you're not going to win many races against Carl Soderman because Zukan Gregg can't get him there and he's just done lap after lap after lap of the quad. And Zukan Gregg got opportunities, but they weren't good enough ones. And yet again, if Zukan had slightly longer arms and as a short athlete, I know how that feels. If he was maybe an inch or two taller, he would have had that initial tag. But from that point on, Kyle, non-stop. Athletes ready! Carl Soderman has already racked up seven evasions now in this tournament. We're only two and a half matches in, not even two and a half, as JB Ninja Boy tries to get hold of him. And Soderman just cutting the corner there onto the sisters. Waits, waits and goes again over the sisters. And JB is trying to find a plan. What is the plan? What is the plan? There isn't a plan they've got that's working, not at the minute. All right, from what I'm seeing here, the plan is you need to do two things. Control the center better. I'm seeing a lot of trailing from the center, but not controlling and waiting. Kyle is taking his eye off the opponent relatively often. Let him do that, go to where he's going, and expect a cutback. Athletes ready! 
Gabriel Payne, Sukon, Greg, and JB could not get hold of Carl Soderman. Anthony Walker now has to try and do it. And he is staying in the centre and waiting and trying to make a move. And he even waits there because he thought he had him, and he did. And maybe that's what was required. A bit of a cool head in this situation. That's what we need exactly. It looked like he decided to go for the dive over the tilted cube here. But what happened was he didn't full commit to it, realized that, put his arm down so that he could just make his way out of the tilted cube and get another immediate chance. Athletes ready! Well, Carl Soderman, what a start he's given this Hollywood team, a lead-off hat-trick as Amos Rendell, the mastermind of World Chase Tag, uses all that nows to control the center. And Anthony Walker's running around the outside, and Amos is just able to snipe and pick him off. Yeah, Amos, beautiful footwork there on the sisters to get his feet on, hit onto that front line. And at that point, I think Anthony needed to realize, okay, you're running across the front line. This is my chance to cut back, not at the table. Athletes ready! Amos starting at the base of the mountain. Moving to the tilted cube as Gabriel just waits on the bars, but Amos moving through the mountain very much like Carl Soderman did. The ridge is offering some protection. Jittery legs and then goes the other way, and now he has to use his speed. He does do, and it's open open ground he's going across, and it's an open kind of juke. I think he didn't know where Gabriel was. He was kind of hoping he might have cut the corner and he wasn't there when he turned around. Yeah, Amos looked like he was playing reverse mind games there. When Gabriel stepped his foot through the uh, ridge, Amo said, I know you're not coming through, and cut back towards the foot. Given how tactical you are, tell us what happened at the ridge. At the ridge, over here, I, I thought he was up top. I should have taken a better look. He came down and slapped me right in the face. <laughs> my mistake, I didn't keep my eyes on him. In comes Matthew Hall, new member of this Hollywood team, and one that my co-commentator Joey Adrian has been very impressed with. Will he continue to impress here? Just moving around each side of that bar, but he swings with both arms and doesn't get hold of Gabriel Payne. And Gabriel, the team captain for Atlanta, might be getting him back into this as he goes all the way across the quad and he just tries to get out of the way. But Matthew Hall just reaches out and a finger or two makes contact with his leg to preserve the three-point lead. Athletes ready! Sukan Greg. Really, really impressive doing work down low, Sukhan. But he gets onto the bars and decides to go back onto the bars and do some work up high. And then he ends up rolling out of it, manages to get back on his feet relatively quickly. It's burned through a couple of seconds, but Matthew manages to step out of the way, goes all the way across the quad and picks up the evasion. It's his third of this tournament. That is such a common scenario right there over by the Tilted Cube, that start where Sukhan is in tiger position up on that bar. Matthew has drilled this countless times. He loves these mind games. Athletes ready! Hollywood have now scored four points in every game they've played so far. They've not managed to shut out teams so far, so maybe there could be a way back. But Ben Ortega on the bars didn't really make a move. And Matthew Hall can't get away under the ridge. Ben Ortega does get his man in the end. All right, well done there by Ben, showing that patience, not wasting his energy needlessly, just waiting for a mistake to be made here at the ridge. Athletes ready! In comes the wrecking ball that is Dale Smith. He starts up high, launches into the loading bay, and then has to negotiate some bars to get himself over to the tilted cube. Gets in that panther-like stance, but can't make it work. Decides to cut across the corner. Oh, my! He's gone down! He's gone down and got the tag. And I tell you what, he really committed to that. It did not look like a happy landing, but he was a lot happier when it turned out he got the tag. Dale Smith is one of the most exciting athletes to watch, because that right there is his calling card. Going for these crazy dives, and most of the time they work out for him. How has he landed here? Oh, missed the foot. Ooh, on the top of his head. Athletes ready! Dale Smith can win it right now. This for a 5 0 win as Max flings himself towards a tilt to cube nearly. Well, bisects himself on the platform, but Dale launches over the sisters. We're back at the tilted cube, but Max gets him this time around. It did not start well for Max. It ended all right. It did. He's been practicing that tack off of the sisters' bars into the tilted cube quite a bit. Missed his foot there, but man, that sprint work from Max kind of blew me away there very fast. Athletes ready! 
big thumbs up to the comms box there from Wes Preston as he looks to seal this victory for Hollywood and a pretty impressive victory it looks set to be. Can he round it off by tagging Max Calder on here? He's not making a move just yet, he's trying to find a way, and that's a lovely little move, a bit of a Frank Mejia style thing, under the front line, he bounces off the sideboard, he's going to get away with this, Max, absolutely incredible! <laughs> he has bounced his backside off the outer board, and because Wes had lost his footing, he still had time to scramble up the mountain. Wes Preston right there. I was joking with him the other day. He is always getting into a position where the evader, or the, yeah, the evader has gotten away from him. The evader makes a mistake, he catches up. There, it was just the opposite. And that might be the first time we've seen Wes evaded in chase tag history. Athletes ready! Well, Wes Preston has finally been evaded, but Omar Zaki has a chance to win this. 4-1, Max cannot get away, no he does. And Omar Zaki is gonna have to get another chance. And it looks like he might do here, but maybe not, because Max is off under the sisters and run the tilt to Q, but this time Omar Zaki makes it count. Omar Zaki seals a 4-1 win for Hollywood. 4-1 against Momentum, 4-2 against Rise, and 4-1 against Atlanta. The number two seeds storm through as group winners in Group D and are straight through to the quarterfinals, while Atlanta are going to have to go through the playoffs. So that wraps up the group stage, and now we can see the lineup for the finals. The four top teams in the groups get a pass straight through to the quarterfinals. They are Apex Sun, GNF, APK Blue, and Hollywood Freerunners. The second and third place teams in the group then fight it out for the remaining four spots in our playoffs round. 